Hi, my name is Chris Carrington and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by www.carrington-imagery.co.uk In the world of digital photography, more and more people are leaning towards shooting images in RAW format. This is because a RAW file contains all of the data as captured by the camera sensor. And when the RAW file is converted and edited in a suitable RAW editor, the ability to control and manipulate the image is greatly enhanced. The problem is that each camera manufacturer has its own version of the RAW format. For instance, Nikon has the NEF, Fuji has the RAF, Canon has the CRW and so on. Now this difference in RAW capture technology causes a problem in that not all RAW editors work with all versions of the RAW format. So in 2004, in an attempt to address this problem, Adobe introduced their digital negative or DNG format. Within a year of its introduction, several dozen software houses and many camera manufacturers added support for DNG to their products. But why should I bother converting my RAW files to DNG, I hear you ask? Well, that's a good question, but it's one that can be easily answered. The advantage of using DNG is that as the availability of editing software with DNG support is increased, your choice of editing software is increased, and for a photographer, that can only be a good thing. If your camera doesn't support DNG format, but you like the sound of it, and you'd like to use it, then this tutorial is for you. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to convert your camera's native RAW image format to the Adobe DNG format using the Adobe DNG Converter. Right, let's get started. Firstly, go to www.adobe.com forward slash products forward slash DNG and read the information that's available about the DNG format and then download the latest version of the Adobe DNG Converter. At the time of making this tutorial, the converter was at version 5.5. The converter comes as an installation EXE. Running the file will install the converter onto your PC, giving you an icon which can be easily dragged onto the desktop, like this one. Now, all you need are some raw files to convert, and a place to put them once they've been converted. For the purpose of this tutorial, I've added two folders to my desktop. The first is called Raw Files to be Converted, and it contains four Fuji Raw Files that I took at a local reservoir. The second folder is called Converted DNG Files, and this is where I want the DNG Converter to place the files once they've been converted. You can, of course, give the folders any name you choose, and place them anywhere you want to place them on your PC. But, of course, you need to know where they are in order to use the DNG Converter. Once the converter is loaded onto your PC, you can launch it by double-clicking the program icon. Now, before we go any further, let's take a look at the DNG Converter interface. The interface is conveniently split into four sections. Section 1 lets you specify the location of the folder that contains your unconverted RAW files. You can also check the box to include subfolders if there are any. Clicking the Select Folder button activates the standard navigation window, allowing you to navigate to the desired folder. Section 2 lets you specify the location of the folder in which you wish the converter to place the new DNG files. Once again, clicking the Select Folder button activates the standard navigation window, allowing you to navigate to the desired folder. The converter also gives you the opportunity to decide if you want to convert the files into the same location, or to choose a different one. If you choose to select a different location, the converter will open the navigation window just as if you had clicked the Select Folder button. At this point, you can also check the box to preserve the subfolder structure if there is one. Section 3 allows you to specify a new file name for the converted files. Clicking in the blank box will present you with a list of predefined selections, or you can choose to use a name or description of your own. You can also add other information such as dates and sequence numbers here. Section 4 allows you to change the preferences for the way the, the converter works. Version compatibility can be set here, along with an option to embed your original RAW file into the converted DNG file. Combining your original RAW file with the DNG file can be useful, but it does increase the final file size dramatically. So, now that we've explored the converter interface, let's get on with converting some files. Moving to Section 1, Click the Select Folder button and navigate your way to the folder that contains the files to be converted. In my case, it's on the desktop and it's called Raw Files to be Converted. Highlight the folder and click Select. Moving down to Section 2, 
Click the Select Folder button again and navigate your way to the folder that is going to hold your converted DNG files. In my case, it's on the desktop and it's called Converted Files. Highlight the folder and click Select. Now move to Section 3 and enter a name for the converted files. You can either use the predefined selections or choose a name that's more appropriate to the file. In this case, I'm going to call my files Formark, as they were all shot at Formark Reservoir near Derby. I'm also going to take this opportunity to give my files a sequence number and a suffix of DNG. Lastly, move to Section 4 and click the Change Preferences button. If you're going to edit the files in Adobe Camera Raw, then check that the compatibility is set to the appropriate version of the Camera Raw that you have. Select the JPEG preview size, but in this case I'm leaving it to the default setting. And now it's time to decide whether you're going to include the raw files in with the converted DNG file or not. But remember, as I said before, including the raw file will make the resultant DNG extremely large. But also remember that if you do decide to include the file, it can always be extracted from the DNG using the Extract button on the main interface page. However, in this case, I'm not going to bother including the raw file with the DNG. Now check that all the settings are correct, and if they are, press the Convert button. The converter will swing into action and display the file names and their current state, waiting, processing or converted. Once the converter has finished doing its work, press exit and then move across to the converted DNG files folder, open it, check the new Formark 010203 and 04 DNG files are present in the folder. If they are, the converter has done its job and it's now time to open the files into a suitable raw editor and start work. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's as simple as that to convert your native raw files to the Adobe DNG format. Well, I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you'll give the DNG format a go. Look out for more video tutorials from www.carrington-imagery.co.uk. But for now, this is Chris Carrington saying goodbye and enjoy your photography.